When you have hair loss, it can be such a scary and deceivingly lonely place. But you know what? You're not alone. You are here with me. Welcome to the Alternative Hair Alchemist podcast. Hi, I'm Deborah Heim. I am a certified alternative hair specialist, a wig boutique owner, and wig wearer myself due to alopecia. And this is my tell it like it is take on all things alternative hair. I also happen to be a certified confidence coach, so I'm going to be sprinkling in some mindset hacks for good measure. So take a deep breath, sit back and relax, and listen to my favorite ways and my best advice on how I help others and help myself to rock that alternative hair. We're going to drop that shame and stigma. What is that about anyway? Now, let's do this. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of The Alternative Hair Alchemist. This is Deborah Heim. You can find me at DebraHeim.com or VeryBestLittleHairHouse.com. And at both of those websites, you can find how you can work with me one-on-one. So if this podcast helped you, then you might want to look into working with me further. I can help with confidence, I can help with style and image, and also with alternative hair. So I look forward to hearing from you. And I apologize that this episode is a little bit late. We are coming off of a six-day power outage in my area of Pennsylvania. So it was a week without lights, without heat, without anything. And I was so upset that I wouldn't be able to get this out on time. So I apologize because as much as I hate bad wigs, I also hate being late. So this week, I thought I would talk again about the individual nature of wigs. Even if you order the same wig in the same color, in the same style, when you get it out of the box, you might be surprised because it's not going to be exactly like the one before it. Sometimes even in my shop, if I order two of the same wig in the same color, you can see individual differences in them, like especially with the length. The length is the first thing that's going to vary slightly from wig to wig. I don't say that to alarm you. I say that so that when you do get your wigs, when there is a little bit of difference, that you can understand that you're going to have to expect that. Also, each wig is cut by a stylist, so of course, anytime you have a human involved, that there's going to be a little bit of variance. So, I know there are some people with their wigs, they want every centimeter, every inch of length that they can get, and because of the difference between wigs, sometimes what I do in my shop is order two in so that we can compare And if you are ordering your wigs online, I would say maybe try that option if you can order two to get them home and compare. Now, I'm talking about ordering wigs and I have never done it in a long, long time. So before you order anything, please A, make sure your seller's reputable and B, check the return policy. Now, the reason I say that is because In my shop, it's not just one, two, three wigs that gets tried on. Often to get that first wig right, we try on 10 to 20. And I'm not talking about a whole bunch of different styles to get that. Sometimes the fine tuning, once you get it down to, okay, I want a shoulder length brown wig. Sometimes you takes five or six of those to find the one that gives you that knockout look that you absolutely love. So in addition to length, a difference you'll find is in how it fits. Even if it is technically the same size, let's say you wear an average and you order that average from the company and you order three of their average wigs. When you try them on, you are going to have slight differences where the cap sits on your head, where the ear tabs hit, and Again, it's not a huge difference, but you're going to see a difference from wig to wig. 
Now, I never knew this until I had my shop, so I like to pass on the information that I've learned firsthand as a wig wearer that I wouldn't have learned any other place other than have ordered so many wigs in the five years and put wigs on and toppers on 1,500 people. I really became aware of the differences from wig to wig. Now, one of the styles I wear constantly that I love in several colors is Beltress Peppermint. And when I try on several different peppermints, I'm actually kind of like, wow, at the differences that you can get in fit. Where the hairline hits is going to be slightly different. It may not make a difference to you, but I'm just making you aware that there are these differences out there. And if anything else, I'm trying to convince you of how cool it is if you get the opportunity to try your wig on in person before you buy it especially if you're a fit problem. I get women in my shop that have worn wigs for 15 years, and when they get that one that fits their head like a glove, I can see that look in their eyes. And if you don't have a wig shop that goes the extra length for you near where you live, you can work with me online. And if nothing else, at least I have the experience of once I talk to you, see your head shape, ask you a few questions, I know not only what I think would work for you, but also what I've seen work on the 1,500 people that I've worked with so far since I opened my shop. And the last thing that you can notice a difference from wig to wig in the same wig in the same style is going to be the distribution of the color of the strands on the wigs. Nowadays, almost every wig color color is very dimensional, has rooting, shading, what have you. And when you look at the color swatch on the color ring, there will be a number of strands proportionate to the distribution in the wig. However, when you get that wig from wig to wig, there is a little bit difference of the way the strands are distributed. Now, in the big picture, Does it make a difference? Probably not. I've tested this out in my shop. You really can't tell from wig to wig that somebody's changed their wig. But again, it's something that if you didn't know when you take it out of the box and you compare it to the other one, you might be thinking, hey, this isn't the same thing when reality it is. Now, also responsible for the variances from wig to wig is the production issues during the pandemic and the recovery from the pandemic. I don't know. I guess there are people, if you don't work in the wig industry, that you probably wouldn't know the struggles of getting wigs produced during the pandemic. It hit the Orient hard, Southeast Asia over there where we have the factories. And some some factories had to close. People weren't showing up to work. So in order to, and for some reason, the demand for wigs during the pandemic, COVID-related hair loss, stress-related hair loss, all of a sudden wigs were selling out everywhere. And then with the production problem, you they often had to hire new workers, train new staff. And so you always know when you're new on the job, you're going to get some variances in the production. So that's one of the reasons is that the pandemic affected all of us. And the wig industry was no exception. And at every wig production place, they do inspect for quality as the products come in and there are some that don't make quality standards and depending on the manufacturer sometimes the wigs that are factory imperfect I guess you would call them go to different outlet sites so I just like to make people aware of that some of the manufacturers will deny that they do this some admit it openly that the seconds or the ones that are just not quite perfect go to outlet and close out situations so sometimes depending on where you shop that is what you're going to get which if it works out for you fine you can usually say a chunk of change but there are unscrupulous vendors that will take these seconds and pass them off as first quality and charge you the same so 
the same as the true first quality is what I'm saying. So your defense against this really is to know your seller, know and trust who is selling you the wig. At my shop, I check each and every wig that comes into my shop. I would not pass a wig along to someone that I would not wear, but I can't say that that's the way it is for everybody. I have seen some wigs come into my shop that somebody should just be ashamed that they did that. I I sometimes wonder, though, there are probably people that just don't know any better. I love wigs. I wear wigs, so I know wigs. And when they come through my store and they're not up to snuff, I'm not going to pass it on to anybody else. So just remember that even with mass-produced items, you're going to have individual differences from item to item. And I thank you for listening. Again, you can find me at DebraHeim.com, VeryBestLittleHairHouse.com. I can do a consultation online with you as far as alternative hair. I do ship to other countries. I use a pretty reasonable shipper. So if getting a quality wig is a problem for you, then let me know. Any subject for podcasts that you'd like, email them to me through the website. Join the Facebook group. Thank you for listening. And until next week, peace, love, and alternative hair. If you enjoyed this episode, you might like working with me one-on-one even better. You can check out the options at DebraHeim.com. You can find my shop at VeryBestLittleHairHouse.com. And don't forget my Wise Wig Advice and Support Group, also on Facebook. I'd love to hear from you. But until next time, peace, love, and alternative hair.